Do you use masks in Lightroom? I'm guessing you probably already do. If you don't, I definitely recommend looking into using masks because it's a really powerful feature of Lightroom. If you do use masks, did you know that there are different masking overlay options? They can be really handy when picturing exactly which part of the image the mask is or isn't applying to. I'm gonna cover all the different masking overlays that you need to know about in this video. My name's Charlotte Rees, I'm from Unleashed Education and you've tuned in to an editing toolbox video. In these videos, we share one quick tip, trick or technique that you need to know about to help make your pet photography editing life easier. So masking is a really powerful feature of Lightroom. It allows you to apply adjustments to specific areas of the image rather than the image as a whole. If you do want to know more about masks in general, we do have a video for that. I'll link that down below. So whenever you create a mask, you're given a red overlay. So let's just take a look at the masks that I've already applied to this image here. So we've got one that masks just the dog. So it selects just the dog. If I hover over here, you'll see that it gives you a red overlay. Now the red overlay is the default overlay. It's what you'll be given as soon as you create a mask. So if you want to change the color of the red, perhaps you've got lots of reds in the image and therefore a red mask doesn't really stand out that well. You can actually change the color of that overlay to a different color. So all you need to do is click on the little red square here and it will allow you to choose a different color. So you can choose bright green, you can choose white, or you can select any other color. I tend to recommend using really bright colors because that's what's gonna stand out best. You can also change the opacity of the overlay too. So if you want that overlay to be a bit heavier, you can just take the opacity up. You can also swap the overlay around. So at the moment we have the dogs selected. I've done a subject selection here which means that when we change these sliders here, it's gonna to apply to that overlaid area, otherwise known as the affected area. So in this drop down here, we can actually change that to the unaffected area. So you can change it so that the masking overlay actually shows you the area that's not going to be affected by your adjustments. That's actually more similar to how Photoshop does it. I like to keep it on the affected area. So I'm just gonna change this back to a red mask and then take that opacity down to around the middle. So one thing about the red overlay is sometimes it can be hard to see where it's going. Now I've done a select subject here and I can kind of just see from the red overlay, it's gone in between the front legs of this dog. It's a little bit hard to see. This is where changing it to a different overlay can come in handy. So you can change it to a different overlay mode by clicking the three little dots next to the color swatch. You can also change it down here. Now, if you don't have this toolbar at the bottom, you can just press T on the keyboard and that will bring up your toolbar and you can change it to any one of these other overlay modes. So let's have a look and see what they do. So color overlay on black and white. Basically it turns the whole rest of the image into black and white. I don't find that one very helpful. Then you've got image on black and white. So it's showing you the selected area by having it presented in color whereas the rest of the image is in black and white. Image on black. This is possibly a bit more usable. It does show you which parts of the image are selected and then the rest of the image is all in black. Then we've got image on white, which is the same, but on white. And then the other one that I use most often other than color overlay is actually this last option here and that's white on black. So that actually shows me the mask and it's a very accurate way of looking at the mask because it's all black and white. There are a few little gray areas in there, but it's mostly all black and white. And I can see from that, that it's actually included this area between the legs really, really clearly. Now let's have a look at some of the other masks that I've created to edit this image in that mode. So this mask here was added to add a little bit of a glow, a bit of a haze to the background. So in this image, I can actually see that when I've done the subtract subject, it's actually not subtracted the little white strip down at the front of the Border Collie's face. Now, I can see that really easily in this mode. If I change that back to the standard mode, color overlay, it's actually kind of a little bit to see. That's probably why I missed it. I just used the regular red overlay and I didn't look at it too closely. So let's change that back again to white on black and have a look at the next mask. So this one's comprised of three linear gradients. 
really easy and straightforward to see. And this final mask here shows that all around the edges minus the subject is selected. That's really, really easy to see with that overlay and a little, a little harder to see with the color overlay. So you'll probably find that you don't use all the different mask overlays. You'll probably stick to just a couple. I know myself, I generally just stick to the color overlay or sometimes change it to white on black. The color overlay mode is generally better for getting a good overall picture of where the mask is applying to, but to see the fine details, it can be really helpful to switch to something like white on black. That way you're going to be able to see if the fur masking is successful. It's going to give you a very accurate picture of where the mask is applying to. Now I will say just an extra tip, after you've created the mask and Lightroom has shown you the overlay, as soon as you start moving the sliders around, that mask will disappear and that will allow you to see the changes that you're making to that part of the image that's masked. Now something that I do instead is actually manually turn that overlay off before I start making the changes because I find that gives me a better starting point. So very quick and easy keyboard shortcut, just O at any time to turn that overlay on and off. Anyway, I hope this has all been helpful for you. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll catch you for the next editing toolbox video soon. Catch you later.